You know, there have been elections where, where I have been sent to Washington, D.C. to make decrees. More than just elections. I've been sent by, by the Lord to do that there on numerous occasions. But there have been other elections when the Lord really wouldn't let, allow me to do much in the way of decrees. Sometimes I was in spiritual warfare and, and the enemy needed to be bound. Uh, I, would, I would find my, myself being stirred to do that. But there have been times in my intercession for America where all I, I was allowed to do was ask for mercy. So I wasn't decreeing with authority. I was petitioning, asking him for mercy. And so Holy Spirit will lead us in our praying and interceding as to whether or not we have the right as his representative in a situation to decree his kingdom come, will be done, or whether in this situation we need to make an appeal. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but tonight we're going to decree. We're going to decree some things over, over the nation as the ecclesia, as the legislative, governmental people of God on the earth to whom he shows his will and through whom he speaks it so that his words become seeds that reproduce, creating his will on planet earth tear down, overthrow, pluck up, destroy, build, plant. And by the way, just as a, just a, little, a little side bar, this is true for, for um, this is true at a corporate level and at a broad uh, geographical level when you're praying for a government or a nation, this is also true when you're praying at a personal level for your family or your personal situation. Sometimes you're going to be led to petition and do priestly intercession. Sometimes you're going to, you're going to be led to move into that kingly intercession of decrees. I used to, when I taught my course intercessory prayer for years, I traveled around the country teaching it. I always told people, because we are so given to wanting formulas and systems. And, you know, and sometimes that's helpful, you know, because we're always looking for something that will help us remember and do the steps. And, but I always tell people this, the number one absolute most important concept or truth regarding prayer and if you're going to have successful, a successful prayer life, it's learning to listen to and cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Because he may say petition, he may say decree, he may say pray in tongues, he may say fast, he may say worship, and he's not going to do it your way. He's going to do it his way. And you may not always know why he's doing it a certain way. And you don't have to know why. Sometimes it's just an act of obedience. Sometimes it's a prolonged situation of prayer. Sometimes it's a decree. Sometimes. So you have to hear, what is your strategy in this situation, Holy Spirit? And what do you want me, how do you want me to do this? So he says, my words have, a, have assignments on them. And back when he was teaching me these decrees, I was, I, was, I was ministering one season and I was finding myself decreeing, declaring things over the nation. I said, Lord, you know, when I say that, I feel such a faith and an authority and I feel like it's just going to happen right now. 
and the way it comes to me to decree it is, would, would sound like it's going to happen immediately. And yet in my heart, I know that's not necessarily true, that he may have me decree something and pray something and release his authority into the atmosphere, into the earth, into a situation. And it may take months or years for that to come to fruition. So he would come, you know, in scripture, he may come to somebody and say, you know, God will make a decree, I'm going to do this. And sometimes he meant now, and sometimes he meant 25 years from now. But he still would release the decree because his words are seeds. So I was asking him about that. And he said to me, you're not always going to know the timing. You don't, it's not always necessary. And sometimes I don't want you to know the timing. But if you just do what I tell you to do, say what I tell you to say, eventually, time will catch up to my decree. Because he said, I declare the end from the beginning. So he'll have you speak something or us speak something, knowing he's going to use that in the future. Because he's out there declaring the end from the beginning. He said, so you go ahead and say what I tell you to say and time will eventually catch up with the decree. So probably I'm going to say in Somewhere in the, in the late 90s, maybe early 2000, but probably late 90s, the Lord had taught me some, a good, a good bit, I guess, but not, not, not a, I didn't know then what I know now about this, but I knew enough to do it. I knew enough to, he could use me to do it. <clears throat> but it was in that season that he gave me the verse in Isaiah 22, verse 22, I, which became really my, uh, one of, if not, if not my life verse. I'll give you the key of the house of David, put on your shoulder, and you're gonna open doors nobody can close and close doors nobody can open. Keys in scripture symbolically represent authority because they lock and unlock, open and close. Shoulder represents government in scripture. The government will be on his shoulder. So when he puts the key there, he's, he's, he's symbolizing governmental authority. Now that doesn't necessarily mean just civil government. It means authority to govern for him as the ecclesia. Okay. So he's not just talking about earthly governments. He's talking about his government on earth. His people, the ecclesia, having the authority to bind and loose, open and close. So he gave me this verse prophetically, and then he gave me a series of confirmations where I think, I guess, probably over two or three weeks, I had maybe 45 what I consider to be confirmations that he was giving me this verse as my life verse. I was sitting on the airplane, and I was in row 22, And departure time was 2.22. <laughs> and the flight attendant came on and said, 
travel time to our destination would be two hours and 22 minutes. <laughs> and I still didn't really think that much about it, just what a coincidence, and I didn't really even associate with this verse. So this was very early in this process until my phone rang. I hadn't turned my phone off yet. And a man who was a spiritual father in my life said, I said, I can't talk I'm long. I'm just on the plane or about to close the door. He said, well, God just told me to call you and give you Isaiah 22, 22. <laughs> and he quoted the verse. He said, you're going to have authority to open doors and nobody can close and close doors nobody can open. Now let me back up and say, that's going to be with this. That's not going to be with me going into Washington, D.C. or anybody anywhere else and having some kind of, I don't know, law or position governmentally, naturally speaking. He wasn't saying that. He was saying, I'm going to give you my authority to open doors nobody can close and close doors nobody can open. But the way you're going to do that is you're going to say what I say. <laughs> 